We light this peace candle, not only for our military deployed overseas, but for the Prince of Peace who has come, so that one day all wars shall cease. Welcome to our Christmas Eve candlelight service at Grace United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are all here this evening. May this be a powerful worship experience that will bring the Christ child closer to you this holy night. Now please stand as we worship the newborn king. Please join in the call to worship. On this night, Christ is born. And now the Savior has On this night, the heavenly chorus resounds. All creation rejoices. On this night, the church throughout the world joins their cry. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. Let us sing these glories as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High, verses 1, 2, and 3. It's on 238 in your red hymnal. Now let us join together in our opening prayer. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Open our hearts and minds, O God, to hear again the message of the angels. May we journey in heart and mind with the shepherds to Bethlehem. May we see the glorious redemption you have brought that lives in the newborn lying in a manger. Amen. Please be seated.
how perfect it is that God would send a child to lead us. The voice of God was heard in the cries of a baby, and that sound reminds us that God cared for us enough to be with us, to save us from the powers of death and destruction and end our journey in darkness. We light this candle knowing that Jesus is born and love has come to earth. And so we offer this mysterious prayer. Lord Jesus, quickly come. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. When was the last time you took a long trip, packed up as much of your necessary belongings that you would need for a week, two weeks, a month, or longer? Imagine doing that while nine months pregnant. Maybe some of you have done that before. Now imagine taking that long journey not on a comfortable bus or a roomy SUV, but on the back of a donkey, or a camel, or a mule. Joseph and Mary did not make this journey because they wanted to be closer to family when the baby came. Instead, their journey took them away from home. The government forced them to take this journey, long and uncomfortable. Yet this is the journey Jesus' earthly parents took. This was the time and place into which Jesus was born. In times of darkness and strife, Emmanuel has come. Scripture reading 2 is from the Gospel of Luke 2, 4 to 7. Now Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to the house to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descendant from that house in the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Now while they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now after their long journey, an uncomfortable journey on a donkey, Joseph and Mary found themselves in Bethlehem. Now they were away from their immediate family and support system, but they were in a special town, the town of David, the greatest king of all the people. Well, this may have been a special town, 
but there was no special room for their stay. There wasn't even a restful place for them to reside. But whether it was a stable or the meager basement of a house in Bethlehem, this was not how Mary would have wanted her babe to be born. But yet, God provided what they needed. And rather than what they would have wanted, they had a safe place, a place full of life. This was the beginning of the journey of faith for our holy family. May we sing away in the manger, number 217, all three verses. third reading is from chapter 2, Luke's Gospel, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace, goodwill among those whom he favors. The king of the universe is born, and who were his first visitors? Shepherds, not kings, not governors, not the rich, not even the priest, but shepherds who spent their nights in the field with the sheep. Yet God chose them to be the first missionaries. They received the good news from the angel of the Lord. The good news was for them to hear and to share with others. God chooses the most unlikely persons to share the most extraordinary news. Listen to the angels tell the good news to the shepherds and to us, for this is the best thing we will ever hear. May we join in in singing our next song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 240, verses 1 and 2. <laughs>
The reading continues from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. What have you heard about Jesus? Most of us remember hearing stories about the baby Jesus. But who told us? Our parents? Our church? This very service? Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, each received messages from angels. Mary and Joseph were told to name the baby Jesus, which means God saves. The shepherds heard from an angel that the child is the Messiah, the one they have been waiting for to save their people. Who is this child? Perhaps it took several years for Mary and Joseph to understand who their son was and who he was called to be for his people. Who is this child for you? And now we invite all the children to come to the back of the sanctuary to meet Reverend Laura to help bring up the baby as the congregation sings, What Child Is This? Verses 1 and 2 of number 219. <laughs> So we have a baby here. I think I turned it on there. We have a baby here. Does everybody see the baby? Does everybody see the baby? A very well-behaved baby. You want to come with me while I put the baby into the manger? Yeah. Because the baby needs a place to sleep, right? So if you were going to use a word to describe this baby, what word would you use? Jesus is a good word. What other word might you use? Hmm? Silent. 
It's very unusual to have a silent baby, isn't it? What other word might we use to, to, to describe this baby? God, that's a good answer. So let's come back down here and let's talk about it. So if you were Mary the mother, what word would you use to describe your baby? Jesus, Jesus you'd name him. What else would you describe your baby? Silent. Silent. Son. son, my son. God. God. How about cute? How about um, hungry? How about needs a diaper changed every once in a while. Do you think Mary had to change diapers? No, you don't think Mary had to change diapers? I bet Mary changed a lot of diapers. Except, wait, wait a minute, do you hear something? Did you hear something? I hear the baby crying. What should I do with the baby? If the baby's crying, what should I do? Feed it? Feed it? I don't have any food. <laughs> How, we got to pick up the baby, right? You see, sometimes we see this beautiful baby on Christmas Eve, and we forget it was a real baby. Yes, son of God, son of Mary, but a real baby. Yes, um, I can imagine the baby cried when it was hungry, and then you have to do this. You feed it, and then you pass it back and forth, and you make sure you've got people to watch over it. Yes, I'm sure Mary had to change a few diapers in her day. I can imagine that, that Jesus cried. Maybe Jesus laughed and cooed. And maybe Jesus fell asleep after Mary did what? Rocked the baby. Would you like to put the baby back? Well, thank you for coming up. And if you want, we have a little special craft that you can do if you're interested. Emma can go and pass them out to all the kids as they go back to their seats. So we wanted to celebrate that it is a night to celebrate a baby. And what a better way to celebrate a baby than to have kids come forward. Now, I was reading from a pastor who actually preached his Christmas Eve sermon holding a baby on his hip. I didn't want to do that with baby Emma. She's a little too big for that. Look, she's even running away now. But, but on this holy night, we celebrate that Jesus is born but Jesus is born. He didn't just come down from heaven in a happy little face. If you've seen Renaissance um, artwork, often the baby looks like a small man. No, this was a real baby that was born. Last year we talked about how it really wasn't a silent night when Mary had that baby, whether it was in a stable or whether it was in somebody's house or whether it was in a basement, but it wasn't a silent night because it's a real child. And maybe for us, our Christmas Eve, we have this wonderful image of a quiet baby, of a beautiful baby. Maybe we've sent out Christmas cards with, with an, an angelic Mary holding the baby. Anybody that's had a real baby knows how long does that last. But that was when the picture was taken. You see, on Christmas Eve, sometimes we have these images in our minds of what we think that night was like, silent night, holy night. But the truth is, Jesus was real. Flesh, blood, hungry, had a diaper change or two, had a spit up or two, I can imagine. We celebrate on Christmas that Jesus, his name, means God saves. We also celebrate that Jesus is Emmanuel, that God is with us, that God loved us so much that God came down on earth to lie in scratchy hay, to have somebody have to burp him, to have to be fed, to have to be picked up when he needed to be picked up. That's the beauty of Christmas Eve with the Incarnation. That God loved humanity so much. God loved human beings so much that God became a human being. God became one of us. God the Son came down from heaven to say, yes, I want to be held. Yes, I want to grow up in a dark world. As I was struggling with this um, sermon tonight, I got a phone call 
from the funeral home. Um, Somebody in the community had passed away, and the funeral home was asking if I would be willing to do the service. I also found out that um, one of our church members, Pam Palick, was in the hospital recently. I haven't been able to get in touch with her today. She was hoping to go home today. I also know that I've been planning a funeral for Pam's daughter. Jesus came into our world, where there is death where there is pain, where we struggle, where we need someone to tell us how much God loves us. Jesus took us on to live in our dark world. As I was reading the beginning of Luke 2, it says, um, at the time of the Emperor Augustus, when he sent everybody to be registered in their hometown, during the time that Quirinius was governor of Syria, and I stopped at the word Syria. And I thought, if there is a place in our planet tonight that needs a word of hope, it's in Syria. We can all name places where we feel like we're living in darkness. Christmas Eve falls at the darkest time of the year to remind us that our life is not always easy. We have the flesh and blood challenges, and Jesus came not just to say this is how to live, but Jesus experienced what we experienced. So Jesus can say, God loves you so much that I, the Son of God, am going to live it with you in your dark world in the messiness, in the muckiness, and in the challenges. But we know that God the Son in Jesus Christ brings us that good news, that we aren't abandoned, we aren't set aside, that God doesn't say, well, just buck up and figure out how to live. But instead, Jesus showed us how much we are loved, and how we can love one another. And if we are sharing the light with others, then we are helping others to endure, to, to overcome, to celebrate, and to lift up one another. Jesus cries because we cry. Jesus laughs when we laugh. And Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you whether you're having a great day or a not so great day. Whether you feel like the light is out of your world or whether you are so excited to have your family and friends around you, Jesus loves you where you are today. Even if you don't understand this whole Jesus thing, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves us. And the light shines in us, reflects through us into our world. That's the beauty of Christmas Eve. Yes, of a lovely baby, but of love that is in us, love that is around us. Remember that as we remember the events of this holy night. Now let us sing another familiar hymn, the first Noel, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Jesus comes to us as a baby, but Jesus also comes to us, and we celebrate it every time we gather around the Lord's table. So let us prepare our hearts and our spirits for this time of Holy Communion as we um, join together in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that often we find darkness more comfortable than light. We confess that we find your good news unsettling, especially when we consider its demands as well as its promises. We confess that Christmas has become more to us than the birthday of the Christ partly because we do not want a Christ child to live in us or in our world. Forgive us, we pray. Give us the courage to lay ourselves open to the wonder and healing of your coming. Be born again into our world. Be born again into our hearts and lives. Hear now our silent and personal confessions as we prepare ourselves for your nativity. Hear these words. The true light that enlightens all has come into the world that light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to put it out. This is the good news. God has heard our confession. God has forgiven our sin. Thanks be to God. So now let us offer reconciliation signs and, and love as we share the peace of Christ with one another. I invite you to stand and share the Christ, peace. I invite you now to find your seats as we come into our time of offering. As we this is a chance for us to celebrate that Christ is alive in our world through the gifts that are offered to us and used through us. Um, our offering tonight will be shared between Comia and Family Promise and our Grace Outreach Fund because these are ways that we reach a hurting and a broken world. Um, so please, as the ushers come forward, as you listen to our gift of music.
Let us join together in our offering prayer. O oh God, our Redeemer, your glorious love shines in the face of Jesus, born a babe in this dark world. We marvel that he generously humbled himself to bring salvation. How precious is your gift of love. May our gifts and offerings reflect the light of Christ and as beacons in the night, draw people far and near closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we've celebrated the birth of our Lord, we celebrate the offering that he made for us. This is our chance on Christmas Eve to look forward to the fullness of what Christ offered to us. See, Jesus came down. Jesus lived, Jesus preached, Jesus taught, Jesus healed. Jesus showed what an obedient life to God looked like, obedient to the point where he offered himself for all of humanity. And so at this table, this Holy Communion table, we remember the night before Jesus was betrayed. That night he was with his disciples, and he was eating with them, and then he changed the dinner for them. You see, he took the bread from the table. He asked God to bless it. Then he gave it to them, and he said, eat of this, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Every time you eat, remember me. And then he took the cup from the table, and he asked God to bless it, and then he gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the coven new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink, remember me. So every time we eat from the table, every time we drink from the table, we remember that God's love on earth had a result, a result that we were brought into God's kingdom, back into God's fold. We were reconciled with Christ, but it came at a cost. And so, Lord Jesus, please send your Holy Spirit on this bread and on these cups that they might be once again filled with the presence of Christ so that as we eat and as we drink, we are transformed into the body of Christ, redeemed by your love and sent out into the world to show the love, to show the reconciliation, to show that there is a peaceful way of living in obedience to you. And now, as reconciled people, as those preparing our hearts for this sacrament, let us pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught his disciples, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite those that are helping to serve to come forward at this time. And as they are coming forward, let me share that in our United Methodist Church, um, I'll let you come, the Lord's table is open to all. All are welcome to receive, whether you are a member of our church or not, whether you understand this or not, all that requires is that you have a desire to know Jesus in a way that, that might transform your life. And so you'll be invited to take a piece of the bread and dip it into the cup, the body of Christ for you and the blood of Christ for you, the body of Christ for you and the blood of Christ for you, the body of Christ for you, the blood of Christ for you. Because the table is open to all, all are welcome to come forward. If you have a gluten sensitivity, we have a gluten-free option here. Um, you can just come, and, and I'll hold that in case you are interested. Please come forward as the ushers direct you.
Now let us join together in our prayer after communion. We are filled with joy, for we have heard good news of great joy. We are filled with love, for we have tasted the sign of God's great love. We are filled with hope, for the angels still sing in our world, and there is a light for us to follow. Amen. There is a light for us to follow. Hear now a reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The true light has come into our dark world. Rejoice, God's light shines now in our world and in our hearts. We celebrate the light of Jesus the Christ now as we light our candles. We will pass the light to one another and I invite you to tilt the unlit light. Because the light is around us. And as we're passing the light, let us sing Silent Night.
We extinguish our candles, not because the light is gone, but the light is in us. The light is in us to go out into the dark world, to go show others that Christ is alive in us, in the way that we love one another, and in the way that we reflect God's love to us. As we have a Merry Christmas Eve, as we go into the Christmas Day, let us have the light in us, and always. And now, let's sing Joy to the World. You all know that one, right? Christ the Savior is born. Go and spread the good news everywhere. Thanks be to God. Have a Merry Christmas.